welcome back to my channel this is part 3 of the population series which is chapter 6 in your geography book of 9th class ncrt book so in the first two parts we talked about the size of population and then how population can change where we talked about birth rate death rate migration etc now we will talk about the composition of population under the heading characteristics or qualities of the population the first point that we would read over here is age composition so what does age composition mean the number of people in different age groups so age composition of a population say of a place like delhi it just means we need to know that how many children are there how many working age people are there and how many aged people are there so if you see about children usually 15 years and below are considered children well i don't know if you people can be considered children or not still technically this is the definition so you people are still children um yes so when we talk about children who are below 15 years the first thing that comes to our mind is that economically unproductive that means they don't earn their living they depend on their father mother brother sister for their daily needs they need care food clothing education and medical care which means they are depending on either their parents or anybody's resources the second population which is the most important one is the working age which is from 15 years to 59 years please remember the range 15 to 59 so this population is basically economically productive and biologically productive economically productive because you know they can earn they can you know, they can get married they can feed not only their parents but also others if they so want to so they are basically economically independent and can support other family members biologically productive because there are no more children they can get married they can have their kids and they can start a family the third category is aged which is 59 years and above so at this age people are usually retired even if they are not completely economically dependent they are still you know on their way of becoming economic dependent and the productivity has decreased so children plus aged population are basically the dependents and the number of dependents if it goes on increasing as in the case of china now which used to follow the one child policy and now all are in the aged group and you know new children are coming up then the policy has gone away so it is creating a lot of dependence and the working population is very less which is not good for the economy so the dependency ratio is suppose i am a working person in my family how many dependents am i feeding so i am the one working member suppose i have four dependents in the family so it will be one is to four so suppose there are two working members in my family and there are say 10 dependents so accordingly it will be calculated now coming to the next point in the composition first we talked about age now sex so what is sex ratio so sex ratio is nothing but the number of females per thousand males in the populations so suppose we say the sex ratio is 933 in 2001 so it means that in 2001 suppose there are 1000 male members in a particular place there are only 93 members or 93 female members in that place so always 1000 is the male calculated uh, category and the other one 93 or sometimes it can be 1020 is about the female so whatever you know the quantity or the number of females is always used to understand sex ratio so it is always the number of females to the number of thousand males it is not the number of males per thousand females be very clear with this if you see kerala pondicherry they have favorable social conditions where girls are basically treated you know at par with male and hence their 
sex ratio is always on the higher side that is above 1000 but places like Haryana, Delhi are unfavorable because they feel girl is a burden they do not prefer girl child so the sex ratio is always very low in these places but recently newspaper it came that Haryana after lot of schemes like the Beti, Bachao and Beti, Padhao scheme and all these things, Haryana is also, you know, going towards a better sex ratio. So, sex ratio is nothing but the number of females per thousand males and it should always increase because it will reflect on a just society which treats the female as equal part to male and, no, and they do not see female as anybody inferior. Okay, so we did age, sex, now literacy. So the composition of population when we talk about this category, the literacy also matters. In census 2001, 64.84 was the literacy rate where male was 75.26 and female was 53.67. But in census 2011, a welcome change, the literacy rate is 74.04 with male being 82.14 and female being 65.46. So if you see still the you know gap between male and female is definitely there but uh, yes it is a good trend that at least more people are literate so in our country the definition of literacy varies from time to time in 2001 it was you know somebody who should be above seven years and who could read write and understand any language now i think maths as a component has been included you should Google, Google and see what are the definitions or what are the criteria that India follows to come up with the literacy rates. Just remember, you should not only study for your exams, you should also study to be an aware citizen who knows about the basic things that is happening around him. Otherwise, you will just become a bookworm who is just studying for examinations and that would not, you know, yield long term benefit. Okay, coming back to the topic, now we did age, then sex, then literacy rates, now we are talking about occupational structure. So when we are talking about any population type, you also want to know what kind of occupations they are engaged in or how do they earn money. There are three sectors, that is the primary, secondary and tertiary sector. If you know primary sector, usually people think, bhai primary hai to sirf agriculture hi hoga. But that is absolutely wrong. Primary sector means people when they work with natural resources, that is primary sector. For instance, agriculture, where they directly do farming, then fishing, mining, querying, hus animal husbandry, forestry, all these are part of primary sector. So when in an exam you are taught that agriculture is the only primary sector, not at all. There are so many other components of the primary sector like mining, fishing, forestry. Secondary sector as we all know is manufacturing sector or the industry led, construction led sector. Tertiary sector is the service sector. It may include administration, services, transport, communication. All this includes the tertiary sector. So if you see developed and developing countries, I hope you all know that India is a developing country, US is a developed country. So it is usually seen that in a developed country, most of the people are engaged in secondary and tertiary, tertiary occupation structure because they are developed and they do not only depend on agriculture, they move forward from villages to cities and they focus on manufacturing, transportation, services. But in developing and underdeveloped countries, developing is India, underdeveloped there may be some, you know, um, African countries and all, not all, some. So they are mostly engaged in primary sector because they are not developed enough to have their own industries and give skills to people to work in those industries. So primary sector is more uh, developed and it engages more people. So India till now the majority or a very huge chunk of a population still works in the primary sector or the agricultural or the allied sectors. Also what we should know is the health 
dimension in the population are we a healthy population what are the health policies we have do we have safe drinking water do we have basic sanitation facility so this part is very important because as you know now we are talking about swachh bharat abhiyan why is that important because that will help the health aspect of the population and a healthy population will be an asset otherwise will be disease they will just spend monies in paying medical bills they cannot develop resources and that would just lead to further underdevelopment second aspect sorry not second another aspect is adolescent population adolescent population is also important adolescent population means 10 to 19 people basically in their teenage and stars uh, little above and little more than that also adolescent population is very important because you know they are the youth of the country they should get proper nutrition otherwise their under development would lead to the under development of the nation because if the youth is you know well nourished and they well developed well skilled that just shows that the upcoming population will also be good national population policy and adolescents so this is your homework as you know you should also study little bit too much of spoon feeding is not good for anyone this is i think in page 59 of your book go through this section which is called national population policy where you will see that how after 81 so many things changes it was initiated up in 1952 as a family planning program where people were given you know awareness and stuff so how national population policy plays an important role in understanding the population change in the country you know it control the birth rate and stuff so do read this second is national population policy of 2000 the revised version and adolescence that how the npp 2000 focused majorly on adolescence and gave them much importance not only on their nutrition but also in giving them awareness and you know treating them for unwanted pregnancies or sexually transmitted diseases so as you know adolescence is the phase where people tend to drift away tend to do things that they should not do or do things in an unprotected way that might lead to sexually transmitted diseases so npp 2000 focuses on it it also focuses on delayed marriage and delayed child bearing so that you know the woman is properly nourished nutrition before giving birth to a child so that she doesn't die in labor so she is strong enough to bear a healthy child again lot of other things are also there by giving affordable food supplements legal measures to prevent child marriage and lots of other things so you have to do this national population policy and npp 2000 adolescence and also whatever data is given over here for 2001 google and find the corresponding data of 2011 to get better marks and um, yeah so part 1 part 2 part 3 is over i hope um, you could understand if there is any doubt in any section please comment in the section below i would try to you know answer all your comments also there is an exercise if by any chance you want me to make a video on this and solve these answers do comment i would definitely love to do it all the best for your exams